Yesterday on Reddit, I posted, uh, I finally found a way to use workspaces in Obsidian. So workspaces in Obsidian is a way that you can um, kind of uh, capture a current state of your working, your working space, your panels and all that stuff, mainly the panels. Uh, and I've struggled to find a use case for that. It sounded really cool. And I thought that, you know, it'd be a really good idea to separate, you know, like the different systems you have in Obsidian, whether that be like your your daily planner or whatever, but it just seemed to be overburdening. But I finally found a way to make it work. And for me, it's been in helping me create linkage. So linkage is a concept in writing where you link the efforts of one day to another day. And I think this could be very useful in um, programming as well in context of like, loading back up whatever it was in in, uh, in your workspace. You know, VS Code has a very similar concept, which is an IDE um, a development environment where you can kind of capture our current workspace because you want to reload that. And what that looks like uh, for me is basically I am using that to sort out all my notes like I could in physically in front of me. I could put six or so note cards in front. I have a 34-inch monitor, so I can fit quite a few on the screen. And then I have in another desktop my writing app, which is Ulysses. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So in Obsidian, um, how you have to enable workspaces, it's a, it's a core plugin. That's what I'm looking for, core plugin. And so if we go to, let's back up. If we go to settings, Go to core, core plugins. If we scroll down to, I pass it? Workspaces right here. So turning this off and on would allow you to enable that plugin. And what that does is it creates this little icon over here to manage workspaces. You can load and create new ones. And so what I did was I went and I opened up a lot of my notes for information overload which is um, a concept that I've been studying for probably about a week or so because um, it's in research for a book that I'm writing. And what I did was I took a bunch of permanent notes, as you can see here, and if I open up the local graph, you'll be able to see how many other notes that I took. So, you know, using a sequence still, anything under five was a related note to this. And so I started to do, um, because I linked them inside this, is I just started to open them and new panels. So we'll just open up a couple different ones like this. Now that becomes a little bit difficult to see. So I kind of, I stack them. So over here, I do that, move around these panels. So that's a pro tip for anybody that doesn't have that. And then I also, maybe I want to have my manuscript open. So hit command enter. And then we'll just do edit mode. So now if you see, I have all these little pieces of information, you know, a general note on information overload, the practical impacts of information overload, predictors, etc. And so if we go to um, the chapter that I'm working on, which is uh, titled Delegated Relevance, in here you see that I have in my outline links to the notes that I want to write about. So these are the notes that I actually... I, I opened up inside this view and I did this for a couple days and I just kept reopening notes and it finally clicked. I was like, oh, this is exactly what Workspaces is for. So I enabled the plugin just like I showed you. And then if we just go to manage workspaces and this will save my current workspace, we'll just name this test because I already have one for delegated relevance. Or maybe or we'll just make it more specific. We'll do formation overload and we'll save it. So now I have two workspaces. I have delegated relevance and I have information overload. Uh, and if I click load, it's actually going to pull up a slightly different workspace um, that I had. Um, actually, that's the wrong one. So if we go, so this is a keyboard shortcut. If you hit on Mac, is it Command P and load? You can load your workspace spaces, and I'll hit uh, delegated relevance. And now you can see this is the, the one that I've been using, slightly different, where I have these different notes open, a different um, kind of format and panels, and then I have the actual research paper here, um, which is a little too, it's a kind of difficult to read, but if you zoom in, you can, you can read it fairly well. So if there was a particular quote or something in the page number that I wanted to research, I could have all this open. And so as I uh, begin my day, I kind of review these, I review my outline, and then I start to write. Um, 
And then I, if I want to switch to my daily planner, I can just close all this out. Now, what this looks like in Ulysses from a linkage perspective is, again, I just I did this exact same thing today as I did yesterday when I posted that on Reddit, which is I had the notes open and I started writing. And this is a, a tip that I got from a book called A Writer's Time, which is to leave sentences half written when you stop writing. And so I, I wrote about 500 and something words today for my morning writing session, 546 to be exact. Um, and now I'm starting a new paragraph and this new paragraph is gonna pull from a note and you'll be able to see that in a second. But depending on the degree of information overload, people adapt in different ways. Some responses are more, and I have the finished sentence in my mind, which is productive and non-productive, but I left it there because I want that to link to my notes. And so if I go to my notes, right here you can see that I'm actually going to start talking about the response types for information overload. And there's hoarders, deleters, and time wasters, and all of that is immediately relevant to that unfinished sentence that I have. And so this is how I'm using workspaces to shorten the setup time because it's a little bit um, uh, tedious if you have to open these and move these panels around every time. Now I can just right away at five o'clock when I sit down to write, I open up my workspace, I would open up Ulysses and I get started. So that is how I've been able to find value in workspaces. I can see this being used also if you were for like resource notes. So in Para, I have different resources here that I can go to. And so there might be a combination of, you know, like the, the index and then maybe like the subtopics would be a good use case for a workspace where you can kind of open up the Golang one and it has, you know, my permanent notes from like a top level, uh, topic level note down. And then I have my index. So it's a little bit easier to browse. I can see workspaces there. But again, um, how you enable it is you go to core plugins and you can even search. There's workspaces, you enable that. Uh, and then you, you manage them. So you click manage workspaces, open the notes in the way that you want them to be open, click save and you've got in your workspace and you can load and then keyboard shortcuts for that. Uh, Control P or Command P, load. So workspaces load and you can save from the command palette too. Uh, but hopefully this is a short and informative video. This has been super helpful for me and uh, improving my writing speed uh, and getting started with a day um, on a, well, hitting the ground running, so to speak, with my writing. So uh, thank you for watching. And if you have any comments, let me know. And the, well, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks.